to another dimension, a dimension of insight, a dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits, there are no boundaries. This is all Planet Radio. Good evening, and we are live. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, with me on the line tonight is my guest and also my co-host Chris Holly is here as well. Um, this is the launch of a new streaming system, and as you can tell, uh, some of the bugs aren't out of the system yet. We do have live links that you can hear us at Facebook. Um, that's being posted out now, and offplanetradio.net. And from offplanetradio.net, you also be able to go over to the Spreaker site. There's links there if you're, you're more comfortable hearing there. And uh, there is a chat box at offplanetradio.net that we will be monitoring for questions tonight. We'll see how the first hour goes if we uh, don't experience the gremlins coming out of the wall electronically. I will entertain some call-ins. And the call-in number is actually on the offplanetradio.net site, and I'll post that out and announce it as well. This is the beginning of 2014 for us. I've been away for nearly three months uh, from doing live shows for reasons that we've discussed before. But I am healthy, I am happy, and I am wiser every day. And uh, so we are... Uh, we are definitely live. I'm going to bring my... Uh, first off, I want Chris to come in and... Uh, Chris, uh, say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. It's good to be back. I can't wait to get going in this show. And uh, I know we'll have some very interesting uh, insights and information from our guest tonight. We will indeed. Our guest began his journey in 1985, uh, uh, a date that streams both forward and backward in the experiences that he's going to recount. He was given extremely uh, important information from higher levels of what we'll just say right now are the um, the galactics, the benevolence, the beings out there who are part of us and of us who are spiritually connected to us. Um, the information that he was given details enormous amounts of information about the nature of planet Earth, the nature of this physical reality, and what is it to occur in the very near future with that. This meeting took place in another dimension, and I want to introduce to you our guest, Dr. Joseph A. Chapelone, MD, coming to us from the Brisbane region of Australia. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, hello, Randy. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on, Joseph. Um, we're going to begin uh, a narrative tonight that I, I suspect we're going to extend out into some other talks in the near future. But as I as I sort of hinted at, uh, f the narrative sort of begins in 1985 with the meeting that you had, uh, where you began to receive consciously the information that you've been now putting out for nearly 20 years. Yes, that's uh, that, that's roughly correct. Although. There's a prehistory to that, and we'll come to it eventually. Um, I want to make it clear, Randy, for the sake of the medical boards here in Australia, that I'm not speaking as a medical doctor. I'm speaking as, as a doctor of metaphysical science. Uh, I've got a I've got a degree in that subject, um, so that should allay any anxiety they may have. They're very strict on what yes. uh, medical doctors can do and say. So. This doesn't count because I'm acting. I'm speaking as a, a metaphysician. Uh, yes, in '85 was the sort of the main beginning. Um, 
I once I woke up, I, I recalled um, speaking with my friends, my group, my team, call them what you like, since the age of 18 months, preparing this body for the work that had to be done later on. Um, then uh, I've got it in my book, actually, one of my first books, uh, My Experience of Aliens and Other Realities, a time when they came to see me. I was about 17 years old, my first year of university. Uh, a, a golden ball came and communicated and said, look, um, we're not going to need you for about 20 years. Just keep going with your medicine and we'll call you when it's time. So about late in my late 30s, I started getting getting a, a, a stirring, a mental stirring. I don't know what better way to put this, and I, I was looking for something, but I didn't know what I was looking for. Do you know what I mean? And eventually, after I exhausted everything physical, I thought, this must be a spiritual thing I'm looking for. So I, I, I started just like everyone else at the beginning. So I started meditating, and eventually I contacted um, the source that I was supposed to contact and so on. And I can I can say now that I'm one of those who's in the in the physical body uh, at this time to do this work. And as, as I've explained in the book, any higher consciousness that comes into the bodies, and there there are many of us, uh, um, have to um, awaken, go through a process of awakening. Because once we get into the body. The bodies have, through the hormonal system, the endocrine system, a filtering mechanism where we can't remember who we are, right. who we've been, we can't remember past lives and so on. So we have this battle that's called the awakening. And once we awaken and connect, things are, are hunky-dory and we can move on. And that's how I started. In 85, finally, I was able to go up to the craft and outside of the mansion and, and, and sit and listen and then recall and get on with my work for this lifetime, which is the final lifetime. This is the final generation for the planet Earth. And of that, there is no doubt once we examine um, all the things that are going on on Earth. And hopefully through the shows, I'm going to explain exactly why this is happening, uh, why uh, the differentiation in different people how, who is going to move on to other areas and who is not. That's the whole message. And it's consistent with the ancient Gnostic system uh, and uh, ancient Gnostic beliefs, and we'll, we'll go through that eventually as well. So the narrative, basically, as I, as I indicated in the intro, I, I picked the 1985 date because I... I as I was reading through um, the information that you sent me and what I've heard of your interviews that you've done with Jeff Rents, um, as well as the lecture on YouTube, um, that 1985 date was just kind of the, 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 the landing in terms of consciously understanding. You, your memory is going back to 17. You have much earlier memories, do you not, uh, going back to even, uh, I think, two years old. That's right. Once, once I awoke completely and connected to my higher consciousness, well, then slowly I regained memory, not of this life, but also of previous lives. And also lives I've had in other um, parts of this physical universe and in other dimensions. But it, it was a slow process, and it can't be done until you're ready because the, the lower mind can't accept a lot of concepts. Now, this is one of the things we're going to have problems with uh, listeners. Some of the material I will uh, explain sometimes is too much for the lower physical, what's called monkey mind. Yes. And, and because of indoctrination that we've had through our religion, our peers, our parents, our society, our military, our nationalism and so on, we may reject it at first and it causes a stirring. But eventually, if the truth is within us, um, that will settle down and the truth will come through. Now, that's one of the most important things you have to understand. There are some people, we are all awakening. Everyone has to know this message of what's going on. But there are only some people who have the truth within and others do not have it. And this will become more and more obvious as we, we continue um, on this journey to the final days. Um, you can talk until you're blue in the face to some beings um, 
they will simply not understand this because it's not part of their inner knowledge. Where others, after a little struggle with their outer minds, will appreciate the truth of what uh, the message is and it awakens their own centers. This is what people tell me when they read my books or listen to the shows that I've done with Jeff Rents and others, listen to my lectures on YouTube, they start to realize, oh, yes, that's right, I knew that, it's coming back to me, and so on and so forth. So that is the awakening of the inner nous, the inner knowing of what all this is about. But there are some that haven't got that knowledge because they are not part of the real creation. We'll get to that eventually uh, to go. But yes, as one awakens, um, as people, uh, your listeners awaken, they'll find that slowly, slowly they'll make realizations and they'll eventually be able to go, go back spontaneously uh, into past lives or be regressed into them by hypnotherapist, or they can do their own creative visualizations and meditations where, will that, where they will get information they need to progress on this path to full awakening. Nothing is given until the, the student is ready, as it were. And, and that was the case with me. By 1985, I had reached the point where I said, right, you're, you're totally ready. Come to the conference and let's start the work. And that's what happened. From 1985 onwards, I was allowed to release the information uh, on the planet and into the ether, and off we went. Of course, the reaction by the world was a totally different thing. It was not a. It was rather hostile, uh, as I recall. Do you not get the sense? And I'm sure you've talked to probably hundreds, if maybe not even a few thousand people over the course of your life, who had the sense early on in their life and their development that something was wrong with our existence, something was wrong with our lives and that there was something big that was going to happen. That's kind of been my experience. Um, information like you're putting out isn't really new to me. I, I think the reality of it for a long time was kind of difficult to grasp. But as I've talked to more people over the years, I know a lot of people who feel like they don't fit into this world. They don't feel comfortable in their skin so to speak and they always knew that there was something quite wrong with what was being lived out in this dimension yes that's the nous that's resounding within them the truth that's resounding within in them and a lot of the, these people come together and say look i don't belong here i want to go home now this is an understanding that the ones of darkness and that's the first time i've used that term the ones of darkness cannot understand because they don't cannot understand anything outside of the physical dimension will come to this uh, concept eventually and to explain it, yes. But the beings of light, and this is what they are, the ones with the nows, with the inner knowledge, with the divine energy, the, the divine blueprint, can recall, but not in exact words, I think disastrous has happened, and has trapped them in this horrible, horrible uh, dimension, this horrible exploitative world, and they're longing to go home. And periodically we've had um, beings like uh, Zoroaster, Manichaeus, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and so on, King Arthur and others, come down and saying, wait a bit longer, we're collecting the thing, we'll eventually all go home. And this is what they're saying. It's the knowledge within them that they know that an error has occurred, that they have to be, uh, they have to be patient, and they're longing to go home to our true spiritual home. Now, this concept, those of darkness cannot grasp because they cannot conceive anything outside of the physical dimension. And I'll explain why as we get on with the um, talks. Now, we define this world... In, in a lot of terms that sometimes become very slippery and good versus evil was certainly one of those because a lot of what we see around us we discern as evil and yet there's um, you may disagree with me on this but the margins of evil are much softer than that in terms of what sits in the middle uh, this world feels like 
I walk around with people who are in a coma, who are seduced by the physical reality. And as you said earlier, there are those who are never going to get what we're talking about. It's just not within them somehow. So there are people, I think, that sit on the margins, and there are those on the extreme ends of this this spectrum, the continuum, that are uh, the ones who are of the light and those who are total darkness. What sits in the middle of all of that? Where is the where is the fulcrum, Joseph, between okay. hardened evil and those who are in the margins? Okay. Okay. To explain this, I have to go a little bit further along the mechanism of what's going on. Okay. Um, in 85, we decided that it was time for the earth to finish. And we gave ourselves 50 years to do this work. What it involved was examining every unit of consciousness on every level of consciousness in, in, uh, in and around the planet. And that included the mineral, the vegetable, the animal, the human, and then the Devi kingdom, which is around us, the class five. And every unit of consciousness has been sorted out as being viable and non-viable. And they were marked as such. That work finished last year. Now, we have basically four classes of consciousness in these human bodies, in these what I call cardboard boxes, the meat bags, right? Right. We have uh, divine beings with the divine consciousness, with the in and out. Now, in preparation for termination of the planet, and this includes the whole galaxy, by the way, but we won't complicate matters today. In preparation for um, the majority were lifted out spiritually in 1999, November 1999. I've got an essay on my website, and Jeff Rent has also got it there, where we had a massive evacuation. And from 1999, you'll find that evil has got a lot bigger in proportion on this planet mainly due to the fact that it's being starved of energy. Now you'll find that the, the world has become far more demonic since that time, and it's quite clear to everybody that it's more and more evil every day. You can see all the constitutional uh, structures of the world, all the banking, all the economic things, all the industrial things are based on evil. The virtual reality that hit them is now breaking down. So what happens there is we have people that can see that and the people uh, that run it. Now, the ones that run it are class five demons. They've always been in control. I'll explain how that they got into control eventually once I explain how this era evolved. In, in between that, we have these what are called useless eaters or these wanderers or these soulless beings or vacant bodies. They're simply robotic consciousness. They aren't real. They are a temporary consciousness created by higher alien beings of the dark side. Uh, and they are the majority in the planet, would you believe? Now, approximately 9% of them uh, have got some light in them. And they are the ones we are now waiting to save, to take away, to uh, transport elsewhere. Most of the theomorphs, or the, the beings of light, have been evacuated. They were evacuated in 2009. And there are approximately 1,000 workers that are assisting me with this work, to this final work around the planet, uh, to, to assist the 650 million that are left that will be saved. The rest are completely gone. Now, they can see the evil, but they can't see outside the evil. Uh, to them, that is normal. That is a normal way of living. Whereas for the rest of us, know that that is wrong. There is something disastrously wrong to be the way we are. And for the first time ever on this planet, virtual reality exposed and collapsing. And yes. What happened? Uh, I think we may have lost him. Looks like he dropped off. Oh, I have to call him back. We are live, and we have no music. So, um, unfortunately, uh, we are so live that we're, we're live naked. 
and uh, there's there's no way to switch away right now gracefully. Um, Chris, you still there? I'm still here. I think a lot of this has to do with what's going on with the sun this week. We're having a biggest solar flare I guess a, uh, um, outburst from the sun it's the biggest one since 1946 in its category Wow! and they said that they hoped and this was not very comforting for me that we would get a glancing blow from it because if it hit us directly we'd be wiped out communication would be gone satellites destroyed the electrical grid down we would just be back 200 years in oh, it sounds silly and corny but in a flash uh, if it hit us directly so it was supposed to mainly miss us but they did think the satellites may have a little bit of you know problems going and i know here in new york on long island all day long my television because i have cable is a uh, Pixel, pixelating, you know, I'm losing the picture, or the TV screen freezes, or I get no service, and then it starts, you know, shuts down my TV, and everything downloads again. My computer's been freezing. So I was hopeful that this was not going to come to Randy's show tonight, but I think it may have found us. Yeah, unfortunately it did. And, uh, we're also, you know, we have a guest who's down under. We're literally across the international date line. And, uh, it's very challenging holding us together. So, um, Chris, uh, talk a little bit about any current projects you're working on, anything you're writing and anything else you're seeing out there while I, uh, try to get Joseph back on the line here. Well, I just wrote an article, which I hope everybody starts to think about and pay attention to, especially if you live near or by an ocean or a large body of water, be it a lake, a river, whatever, is that it's become apparent to me from all the... Oops, now I lost Chris. Okay. Hey, we're back. Yeah, the, the line just dropped out for some reason. Mm, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I've got to pull Chris back in because I unfortunately disconnected her. So, oh, okay. Um, let me get her back in. Live radio at its best, folks. Um, we, uh, unfortunately, I'm... St <laughs> this is uh, learning new software and... Uh, running a new system I kind of expected tonight was going to be like this so we uh why well, Chris is not showing up in my list anyway Dr. Shepelin can you pick up where you were before and I'll go ahead and work on getting Chris back in do you remember where we were okay yes with the viables Yes, you're, you're t telling me that there are a lot of people that are, are, are walking around like zombies. Yes. As if they're, they're just totally uh, out of it. Now, the reason for this is that the mechanisms that were controlling the virtual reality and which we were controlling them completely as robots, their minds and bodies, are breaking down. Therefore... They are erratic in their thinking, in their behavior, in their mode of... Uh, that They've lost the rails, as it were, to their living. They don't know what they're about. They now can see the evil, but they can't understand it. They don't know how to progress. They have no future. Anything is possible. Hello. Or well, they're parking there. Okay, I, I'm having trouble juggling you and Joseph right now. Sorry. Why don't I drop off so that you can get Joseph back and wait here, and you can always call me back. Okay. Let's Very try good. that. Very good. Thanks. See you soon, everybody. Of living in peace and light and goodwill and, ha and, and joy, you follow, and uh, peace. And they are the ones that are having modifications so that they can exist outside of this dimension. They are the ones that are awakening. They are the ones that you and I are trying to reach out, to awaken. The others will never awaken. They will deny this uh, until the very last day, particularly the demons. 
Now, there's a lot of new ages out there. I know that they're um, claiming that they have this feminine power mm. that is able to stop all this happening in the world. But they, they are as dumb as they are stupid because the, you can see that the processes that are destroying the planet are unstoppable. I mean, how are they going to stop the radiation from Fukushima? Are they going to use their tampons to dry up the uh, radioactivity? <laughs> How are they going to stop the climatic changes, the GMO food stuff, that are the poisoning of the soil, the sea, the death of the fish and so on? No, we are on a dead-end line. Now, one of the things we decided in, in, two, in, in uh, 1985 when I was on the craft um, was that it had to end in my lifetime. I have to be here on the last day. Make of that what you will. When they told me that, I was already 41, and I said, my God, I'm not going to live another 50 years. I'd be 91. And they said, well, wait and see. So from that time, as we did the work, and of course I'm constantly in touch with them, the final date has been able to come down lower and lower and lower. That's why you notice that things are speeding up more and more. Yes. Now, it's not just Earth. The sun has changed, for example, and uh, the radiation isn't allowing us to, to, to uh, convert the gastrol in our bodies to vitamin D, which means a lot of people are going to die from vitamin D deficiency eventually. Uh, uh, the other planets are fracturing. The comets are becoming erratic and so on. So it's really not only just the whole solar system, but the whole galaxy is eventually going to go. Now, this is part of the plan of correction of this physical dimension, which is an error that should never have occurred. Um, now, mo no, over 90% of the physical universe, in fact, has been corrected. It simply does not exist. What we see as light from stars of a great distance is really just their light. The source is gone. Now, we have a clue that this is an, errat an error. This physical dimension is an error. Jesus told us, and it's in the Bible. He said, mm -hmm. if you recall, a grapevine has been planted outside of the Father. That means outside of the true creation. That's right. And it must, must be pulled up by the roots and destroyed. We will eventually talk about the formation of the uh, error. In this first introductory show, we can't go into detail uh, about everything, of course. Right. But it, it, from the very first day that the physical dimension manifested, it was doomed. Now, the, the negative energy that uh, became consciousness during that experiment became known as the evil mind. And in this sector of creation, or we know it in, the, in this world, is Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, and it, that is a mechanism that has controlled this virtual reality. Now, this Jehovah mind has been ensnared, it's been entrapped and dismantled. That being the case, all the mechanisms it had to control its robots have broken down. And that's why you see the chaos and mess we now see in the world. And you see, the, the evil ones are acting as if they're invincible now, because they've got no opposition. But that's been allowed to happen because the light has removed all opposition to allow them to self-destroy. And in the meantime, as they do that, within time, we will extract the viables and go elsewhere. There are plenty of crafts waiting to do that. And we'll talk about those plasma crafts and the different aliens. Now, most of the aliens that have visited this planet are evil, but there are some, of course, that are the true divine aliens that come from other dimensions that are waiting to take the ones uh, that are viable off the planet and completely out of the dimension. So the, the picture is a very different to what has been painted to us by history, by science, by religion, and so on. Um, excuse me, that's my house phone while I ignore it. Um, so uh, people are awakening slowly to this, and it, it's not an easy thing to grasp. It takes time to um, uh, fight, struggle against the programming we have in our minds that tell us differently. That's because we've been indoctrinated that much. 
But eventually, when people contact this energy, this knowledge that I'm putting out, uh, they awaken and they feel that it's right. And they, they awaken their own knowledge, not my knowledge, but their own knowledge within, and saying, ah, these are the answers. This is the real thing. This is what I've been wanting to express and I haven't been able to. Now, the other thing is a lot of the people of consciousness from here on Earth are from other dis distant galaxies and uh, planets. Right. And they want they remember those more easily and they want to return to them because they're far more advanced. But from there, they want to go home to the real home. And this is the home where there is no evil. See, most people who have got the true heart um, are made of light energy, can't understand the others that can't live in peace, harmony and love. You see, we don't understand why they're such cruel bastards, why they're so bellicose, why they're forever frictional. It's because they don't respond to love. They haven't got the mechanism to respond to love. And those people of darkness can only live, and this is the critical point, they can only live by exploiting the energy of the good people. Now you see why we are forever suffering on this planet. There is never peace. There, every every step of, uh, of life is exploitation, suffering, pain, misery. And it's only the short moments that uh, and, uh, try to nullify it when we, are, we think we're happy. But we're only happy because we're conditioned to think we're happy. In actual fact, the suffering continues and we, we go into senility with all the aches and pains and problems and fear of death and so on. That's because the whole system has been set up to exploit the energies of the, the theomorphs, the light beings that were trapped in here and they weren't supposed to be. And that's why I say the moment the physical universe um, precipitated, it was doomed because it enclosed itself and doing that, it, it had limited amount of energy and eventually it was going to implode, self-destruct. And, and now this is what's happening in our sector of creation. Um, we can go to the different factors of how that's happening uh, quite easily, eventually. And the, the scientific explanations of what's going on and the historical explanations, and then unless you go to Gnosticism, are all bulldust. Because they are just part of the virtual reality and not giving you a true picture. Now, if people, one of the things that's going to happen with this end time, as promised by the ancient texts, is that we're all going to know who is who. In other words, we're all going to recall our psychic abilities. The ancient, or the religions and history and science have tried to deny that we have psychic abilities. It, and the religions call them work of the devil because they don't want us to understand what is going on. They don't want us to obtain our own powers to see who is who. But it's happening anyway because this is part of the end time. And so when we walk down a mall and we look at people and there's nothing, no one home, we see empty eyes and an empty shell, we know they're robots. Then others we see as uh, very evil reptilian beings. You yes. can see it in the eye. They've got reptiles' eyes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and sir. A lot of people <laughs> are, seeing, are seeing that they're demonic. They've got horns, they've got tails, and so on. Well, you can't escape that. One, you can get to a certain level like I am. You can watch a movie. You can see who are the robots and who are the demons. You can watch the news and you can tell them. You can watch a football game and you can tell who's who. And we are all going to get to that level fairly quickly for one good reason, because we're going to keep away from those beings of darkness and seek our own kind. And, and, and light will go to light, and this has been predicted also, until the whole thing finishes. And the, and the finish is not that far away. We're, we're virtually ready uh, at any time to move. Because if you realize, like I said with Fukushima, that radiation, if it continues unabated, Which it we will. will be dead in four years. That's right. Yeah. No one's going to stop it. Women power's not going to stop it. They're going to be, not be able to drink all that water and, 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 and uh, 
you know, purify well, we already, the kidneys. We already have reports on the west coast of the United States, and this is people who yes. have feet on the ground that I talk to who have told me about the rapid decay in the uh, ocean life along the beaches of Southern California. Uh, the fact out there right. is that the food chain's been so impacted that the pelicans uh, down along the beaches in San Diego are beginning to go into cannibalism to survive. So we're it's already not seeing all, this. That's right. This is this is not th- only that. But the, last, the report I read the other day was that there's the amount of cesium radiation on the roads, and the tar on the roads is so high that it's poisoning people as they drive in their cars. So within a short time, they're all going to be dead because that radioactivity will give them leukemia or thyroid cancer or whatever it's going to give them. In other words, and that's going to spread. It's being spread by air, by rain, by the seawater, and so on. That's that's just one. Uh, many many uh, so, uh, psychics have picked up that we need. There's going to be a massive comet strike, but we don't know exactly when, because the comets are now becoming rogue uh, instruments. That they're not following the laws of physics at all. Uh, the planet is supposed to fall on its axis. Um, if a nuclear war does start, and they're dying to start it, as you know, China, North Korea, Russia, Pakistan, United States. We won't last two days. There is a very distinct possibility that they will burn the atmosphere like they did on Mars. And, and therefore, we, we will all be dead within two days. But that is not to frighten people. That is the mechanism by which we go home. People have to understand that. If they are viable, that is our way home. This is how we drop these bodies, these useless meat bags. These are prisons for our souls. Now, they shouldn't be frightened. They should be happy. That's what it means by we're getting out of here and we're going home. That's what a lot of people have wanted. The ones that are terrified are the ones that have got nowhere to go. But they only have themselves to blame. And I'll keep coming back to this point because they've been offered the choice to to select the light against darkness many, many times throughout many generations, many lifetimes but they've refused. They prefer to be the murderers and thieves that they are, to steal the energy of others, to you know, conduct war and exploit them and punish them and make them suffer, rather than live in peace and love. And therefore, that's how they failed. They themselves have declared themselves a failure. Everyone has been given an equal chance. Anyway, let me go back to the, the conference we had in 85. They said, it's got to be in my lifetime. Okay. I said, look, I can't, I can't live to 91. I don't think I can. Um, um, very few people do. And besides, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quite demented by then. They said, oh, just watch and see. And slowly, as we got the work done, I spent 20 years traveling the world, doing various uh, things that I had to do uh, to bring this on. Um, the the end time came down lower and lower and lower. So until now, we're, we're, we're within five years of the end, believe it or not. And I, I already mentioned the date on Jeff Rentz's show. Now, why can't most psychics pick this up? This is very important to know um, because most of them contradict me. It's because most psychics are fed information from the etheric and astral worlds, which are part of the virtual reality, which are controlled by the evil uh, empire. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So they have not got access to the true knowledge. We have to go out of this dimension to get the true knowledge to filter down. And so uh, they will eventually get this knowledge um, but at the moment, most of them can't get it. And, of course, most of them are not of the light anyway. That's the other important thing. But many are picking it up subconsciously, even the robots and the demons, and that explains the massive amount of depression that is occurring in the world and the uh, a fantastic increase in suicides because through their subconscious, it's coming to their outer minds that they're finished, they're doomed, and they can't cope with it. And this is part of what I've called the terminal madness of the end time. I wrote an essay about 20 years ago explaining how this was going to happen. And the world changes have followed exactly 
as I wrote in that essay. And those people that have followed this have seen that the deterioration has been exactly like I explained in in that essay. I, I wrote that essay because I knew what was going to happen, because we knew we could see from the other level, from the other dimension, exactly what was going on to this earth. So now we're, we're frightened people perhaps today, so we, we better try and even things out. Mm -hmm. yes. If you are a, a good person, if you are a person of peace and love, that you do good, you love animals, you don't kill animals to eat them, you, you're, you befriend your neighbour, you always show caring and love and so on, even though the others, the majority don't respond, you have nothing to fear because obviously you are viable to continue existence elsewhere. If you are an absolute bastard who, who all you can think of is to cheat the other person, is to create war, to abuse other people, to abuse, uh, you know, anyone, to rape, to steal, you know, uh, uh, any sort of rage and things like that cause disharmony and suffering and exploitation where well, you're obviously not going to be wanted in the clean dimension, right? You're not, you're not going to make it. You haven't made it. Now, these people, when they hear my message and, and feel my energy, become very angry because I'm reminding them of what's going to happen to them. But internally, they're very frightened because they know I'm right. The others, of course, who are of light and of love and happiness and are anxious to get away from this hell, on hearing this message and feeling my energy, are related because they know this is the final solution we've been waiting for. And every avatar that's uh, been on the planet, I use that uh, sacred uh, word, Every son of God that's come on uh, to the earth since recorded history has, has told us exactly this, that eventually at some stage this abomination is going to finish and the good ones will be rewarded and the other ones will go to perdition. So the, the message follows exactly how it's been told. Now, the being that keeps coming back again and again and again is the same light energy. It's the same higher energy in physical bodies. So in our year and the last few thousand years has come back as Moses, as Zoroaster, as Matakaius, as Jesus, as Muhammad, and so on. Um, and they've given the exact... It's the same being in different bodies, of course, right. but giving exactly the same message uh, again and again and again. Now, there, there's a caution to be given here. If people read what these beings have supposedly said or written, they must remember that those writings and sayings have been corrupted. Now, the Koran is a perfect example of this. As soon as Muhammad died, the, the Ottoman Caliph uh, took, the Caliph Ottoman took all the writings and distorted them in such a way that we have the semi-nonsense that we have today. And that goes for the Bible too. There are Gnostic threads in the Bible, which, thank goodness, have been discovered through the Nag Hammadi Library and the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that more clearly tell us what Jesus said, not the rubbish that exists in the, in the modern version of the Bible. And so it goes with Manichaeus. The, the Catholic Church tried to describe, describe Manichaeus as a lunatic until um, more pristine writings were found in Turfan, in... Uh, China, for example, that from his era, which was a, a couple of hundred years after uh, Christ, and, and they were exactly opposite to what the Catholic Church tried to portray, because Manichaeus is Gnosticism, and uh, the, all these religions tried to destroy Gnosticism because it gave the absolute truth, like we are giving now. Now, how do we know that this is the truth? Well, when I gave it out 30 years ago, there was no way of knowing. It was only a big guess, and we just had to wait. But now if we look back in retrospect from 1985 and from what I've written, and everything has developed exactly the way that uh, we've been, I've been told to say it, we can see that it is absolute truth. And now people have developed a skill to see demons, to see evil, to see soulless robots, empty robots, empty shells, and so on. We've seen UFOs. We've been to different types. We know that there are good and bad alien beings, and so on. 
So all the truth of what has been written has, is, is common knowledge and it's obvious, but it wasn't 30 years ago. So you'll find people will divide themselves automatically. The ones that are good and viable will realign to the light and the ones that aren't, that are, that are finished, will align to darkness and they are going mad. And you can see this in your politics, <clears throat> in the financial systems, in war, in wars and in, uh, in ravages on the roads and so on. You can see it everywhere. Is that not so? Yeah, absolutely. It's it as if evil has taken over completely. And, and that's uh, been allowed to happen because the light has been extracted the energy to oppose it so that they can self-destruct. In the meantime, the, the good beings, the viable beings that are waiting to go away, and I said there's about 650 million of them on the planet, which is about 9% or so, are being nurtured by uh, 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 what I've called the new green energy that uh, I started bringing down from 1985. Now, evil beings can't use this energy. They could use the previous energy to attack the light beings. But now this, end, this green energy is immutable. They cannot use it. And what the green energy is doing is sustaining the viable beings until we lift out and making them happier and more stable and uh, mentally uh, uh, quieter and so on so that they escape the eternal madness. But at the same time, um, if the ones of darkness try to use them, it, it sort of burns their souls. It, it makes them aware that they're finished. And this is why they're becoming more frightened and more erratic and doing far more stupid things. And the fact that they're running out of energy is what's causing them to go on a rampage like they have. And if you notice just the United States itself from 1999, it's attacked, what, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, all the Arab nations, it's undermining uh, parts of Russia, uh, the Ukraine, and uh, all, all these sort of things. What they're doing is causing more and more suffering, apart from stealing the riches of uh, these countries, the oil, the gas, the opium, and whatever. They are causing massive suffering to those nations and uh, its populations, well, and to your own. I'll go... Uh, you take this another level. The energy that they're exploiting is literally black energy. It is literally being sucked out of the earth violently. Um, they're fracking it. They're drilling it. They're going into the ocean yes, beds. This is the life force that they've drained off of the earth. That is the black energy. I've ne it's not been lost on me at all as a commentator. And I've used the, the analogy that this black energy is what feeds the black souls and the black spirit that embraces this planet. Can you balance that with how this new green energy works? How would we visualize that? How would we understand that better, Joseph? Yes, you will know it. You will know it by being nurtured if you read my writings or listen to my voice. It's an automatic response. The energy is there. But only the ones that are viable can make use of it, can feel it. It uplifts them. They feel happier. They connect their mind to the higher mind. The ones who can't use that energy um, can't make any sense of it. They read my writings and they don't make any sense and so on. Now, going back to what the beings of darkness are doing to the planet, they've done to plenty of other planets. They exploit to the stage where they totally destroy it. There, there's plenty of examples like Vulcan, which is now the... Um, the rocks are between Mars and... Uh, Meteor Belt, yeah. And, yeah, they blew that up. These are the same beings that did the Manhattan Project in the 40s to mm. create the atomic bomb. They blew up Mars, but they didn't quite uh, wreck it, but they, they destroyed the atmosphere, and the few Martians that are left all live underground. These are destructive murderers. All they know is how to conduct war and destroy, destroy, destroy and they suck the energy out of that um, any system they can. Um, so now that they're running out of energy because the divine energy is being cut off and only the new green energy is available and the beings of darkness can't use it, they're starving. And as they're starving, 
their minds are being warped and they're going mad. And you see, they're doing totally irrational things. And, and they'll continue to dis, do this more and more and more. Not only that, as the energy that sustains the virtual reality is decreasing, it's collapsing. And we are able to see, actually, how evil it's been. We see how institutions are run by such evil demons, how the banking system has been run to destroy people. And it does in every generation. They do exactly the same, same thing. They pull the plug and destroy the little people. I mean, they did it to you a short while ago, and they're going to do it again now. They, they, they've done it to the whole world. They control the food industry. They control the pharmaceuticals. They, not that these things are really any good. The side effects are far worse than if you teach people how to live well and use herbs and veg vegetables and fruit. Do you know what I mean? So it's all an evil system that's breaking down. The end point is it's going to implode and there's no way that can be stopped because if you open your eyes, you see it exactly. Even the chemtrails or the harp technology itself Yes. are enough to kill us, yeah. let alone all the other things that are there. Oh, we're saturated in, in all sorts of, of, of dark energy here. EMP pulses, uh, the mic right. microwave, the um, Wi-Fi's all over everywhere now, this ubiquitous constant signal noise that we get. Sensitive people, and I'm one of them, pick this up in the background a lot of times. I'll walk into some place that's particularly hot, and I will just be able to begin hearing the frequencies and feeling the effects on them. They can actually yeah. begin to burn your skin. They do that on purpose to destroy the brain. They want everyone dumbed down. And, and also, you, you, I'm sure you know that there's the eugenics program that was begun in about 1916, last century, right. to destroy as many humans as possible, simply because their experiment of creating humans has gone too far. The humans were created by evil aliens, these demons, not by the real God. And, and, and these, are, these bodies are traps for the true souls. But it, it's got out of control, so they're trying to formulate ways to destroy most of them. But they're going to run out of time because they themselves are going to be destroyed. So the history of the world and the situation and the people and who we are is totally different to what people read in science and history and through their religions. Now, take, for example, just humanity. There's no such thing as humanity. There are at least 10 classes of consciousness that exist in these human bodies. Um, we've got good beings and evil beings. We've got robotic beings and soulless beings. We've got demons. We've got... Yeah, that's the continuum beings. I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all, all these are different uh, consciousness. Now, until you awaken and can see them, you don't know, and, and the, the religions tell you, oh, treat everyone respectfully, accept one, turn the other cheek, and so on. That is a message for you to get raped in energy terms. Do you know what I mean? Right. I mean, as Jesus said, as I, he said, I came down with a sword to fight a war, to separate the wheat from the chaff, not to be friends with everybody and let them destroy you. Uh, and that's what the religions try to teach because they don't want the truth known. Well, this they is the uh, everyone. this is the love and light new age people out there, and this has just exploded in recent years. I've done a lot of commentaries taking this apart. What I call the love and lighters, and they are, by the way, a group of people that have um, appropriated um, the so-called benevolent ET contacts through their galactic confederations and angel light beings who are telling them that everything is going to be perfectly fine, the earth's going to be healed, the energies are going to be taken care of, humanity be, humanity will be redeemed from um, the dark side, and they put predictions out routinely that just absolutely fail. Um, this is yeah, of course, they're the demons. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I went to Mexico early on. After 85, I went to Mexico with George Murphy. She was running expeditions there. We were told to go and make contact with certain ones to see that they'd received the correct message. Now, before we left Australia, they told us to take down some signs from the craft, and we wrote them down. And I can remember quite distinctly, we were in a little village south of Mexico City, 
at a lawyer's place and he was being visited, he and his daughter were being visited by a craft just about every night and it would land in their backyard and you could see the markings and all the village could see this uh, UFO come down. And when we asked um, them, did you notice any markings at all? The young girl, she was about 17, 18, said, oh, yes, I wrote them down in my diary. And she brought them up, and they were exactly what we had. So we knew that they were being visited by benign beings. Now, when we went around all of Mexico and made sure that the ones that were to be contacted had been contacted, we asked the peasants in the markets and that, have you had contact with UFOs? Now, I believe why... Mexico has so many contacts is because it's 14,000 feet up or thereabouts, and therefore it's much easier for them to see them. But they had two distinct stories. There were the good aliens or two types of aliens, and I've written this about in my book. Ones that said, look, go back to sleep, everything's fine, we're going to correct everything, uh, nothing's going to happen to the earth, uh, it'll be a paradise again. And, and of course, that was bulldust, they're the evil ones. The other, the other alien said, look, the earth is finished. We are selecting the ones that are good enough to continue, and the other ones are finished. And this, of course, was exactly what's happening now. And this is what me and my rescue represent. And what I wrote from 85 onwards, that's when I wrote my books, when I came back from the craft, has developed exactly the way I said now, the very first thing I hit were the New Ages when I came out to the lecture. And they said there is no evil, but they demonstrated the most venomous evil against me that you could imagine. And I said, well, look at yourself. Look at how you're attacking me. Where's your love? Where's your, you know, you know, empathy and so on? They didn't have any. They were very, very evil. So eventually they've uh, accepted that there is evil but only because um, some people want to be evil and so on, and now they're going to split the earth. The good ones are going to go to a good earth and the evil ones are going to stay in a bad earth, which is absolute nonsense because the whole universe is going. No part of physical matter can exist because it's got an innate property of descending into degeneration. In other words, left to itself, uh, matter disintegrates into evil energy and you can see that in every aspect of human existence look at what happens when there are riots and law and order breaks down uh, the people become animals worse than animals they loot they rob they rape they, they you know they're uncontrollable that's because all uh, the physical energy and uh, bodies matter that we are made of disintegrates into this negative energy that that destroys and self-destructs. That's why the whole universe has got to go. Now, most people can't, particularly the ones of darkness, cannot conceive the fact that this physical universe is only one of many, many universes. Even physicists have trouble with that, although they're starting to realize now with experiments that there are other dimensions. And I mean, string theory has that there are about 27 other dimensions. But they are still going along the line of the physical. But that's not so. The other dimensions outside of the physical are not physical. This matter has been made by evil, for evil's sake. And as I said, it was doomed from the start. And it will all be destroyed. It will liquefy and go back to primordial energy, back into the primordial pool of consciousness that exists elsewhere. That's where all consciousness starts to come from. And then for all evil will be destroyed forever. And this experiment will never be repeated, it will never be allowed to occur again. It was just a massive celestial error. Uh, and it's taken this long. Now, ha having said taken this long, I should explain to your listeners that um, as time, the, the lower you get in vibration, the longer time seems to be. So that at the level we're at, um, billions of years have passed since the, uh, the physical uh, precipitated as via the Big Bang. It was something like that, but it was all, all at once in this time and space. In the higher levels where the error occurred, 
only a few minutes have passed since the era began. Now, for us, it's difficult to comprehend such a thing. Even for the spacecraft that I visit every night, although I'm only allowed to recall at certain times, even there, the ratio is approximately 2.8 million to one. That is, one day there is equivalent to 2.8 million days on Earth. So although it appears that it's been a long, long time in correcting this error, in actual fact, the correction is almost instantaneous on the level on which it occurred. I'm sorry, that's a very difficult concept yeah, for, for people is. to it's, right? um, it's But steep. at the highest level of consciousness, there is no time. There is no well, time. Well, and here's the we thing. Are present. I've pondered this statement uh, a lot, and... I think people who experience higher consciousness are at least abstractly able to wrap their mind around this. I, I have a lot of conversations about this. This is something I think I've been obsessed with my whole life. What is the nature of time? What exactly is it? And why is it so flexible and fluid? I mean, you hear time flies, and then other times it seems like a minute goes on for five days. So... On one level, it's a, this is a concept that's trapped us as well, this concept of time. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, it's an illusion. Time is an illusion. For example, think of yourself 20 years ago. Now, instantly, you can think of yourself as you were 20 years ago, and then you say, well, what's the distance of 20 years ago to now? There is none. That means that the time is an illusion. And when this dimension closes down... And it's more than the, the 14 to 16 billion years that the scientists say that it's existed. When it closes down, it's as if it's never existed. There's no time. Now, when you meditate, for example, mm -hmm. um, you can be away uh, quite a, a long, long time. And it seems it's only a few seconds. When you go to the demonic levels, and a lot of us are trapped by vortices, for example, when we have nightmares... It appears that we're down there for a long, long time, and yet it's only a few seconds. At the moment, because the whole physical universe is crashing, you will notice that time is accelerating. That is, we're going lower and lower. Yes. Um, and which means that uh, we're going more and more to the demonic levels, and that's why a lot more demons are coming into physical bodies. Whereas in the higher and higher dimension, the time slows down more and more and more, until, as it was described to me, this whole um, experiment, the evil experiment, is just like a mural on a wall. And it's like a slight smudge that has to be repaired. This is our planet, radio. And that's all it means in the higher levels.